hello everyone and welcome to another episode of New Releases. Um, I'm thrilled today to have two fabulous sopranos with me. I have Ashley Nicole and Elisa Rose. Hello ladies. Hello. Hi. How are you both doing today? I know Sundays are days sometimes we do some gigs. So how's it been so far? So far so good. So far <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I've had a relaxing day so far. Good. Um, we are here, of course, to talk about your new releases. You have singles, both of you. Um, but before we do that, can I ask you uh, to share, if someone's not familiar with your music, just a little bit about where you're from and what you sound like. Should we do, just because I see you this way on my screen, Ashley and then Elisa. Sure. Okay, so I'm from Indiana and I, obviously I'm a classical crossover singer. I was trained um, classically as an opera singer and I also sing a lot of pop music. I write pop music and crossover music as well. I sing a wide variety of music, um, everything from country to 80s music. So, so yeah. Yeah, you've actually done a couple of opera roles, is that right? Or is it scenes, Ashley? Yeah, I did two lead opera roles with my local opera company. I did Adina and also Rosina. So the Elixir of Love and the Barber of Seville. Awesome. And then I think it was your first EP. I was listening to it to today. And it, it is like you were saying, you're doing the pop. So that's really pop. After having heard Charade, I wasn't expecting that. But that's so cool <laughs> that you have that range. Um, we'll go into that in a bit. But Elisa, on to you. Uh, I'm Elisa Rose, and I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I am a classical uh, crossover singer. I was uh, also operatically uh, trained at the Royal Conservatory of Music, and uh, but I, it was always just singing opera, but um, now I've opened to all new genres, so I can sing musical theater and pop and. Uh, um, I can't remember what else I was going to say, but, uh, but yeah. And I also sing at church and, uh, it, it, it's fun. It's fun, uh, singing all these genres and being able to do that, you know, very well. It, it, it's cool. Was that an easy change for you to do, Elisa, incorporating more styles or was it like hard to get out of that operatic mindset? It, to be honest, it was hard to get, to get, uh, rid of that operatic mindset as, um, but, I guess as an operatically trained singer, you have to be careful what pop songs you choose mm -hmm. because you can easily go into opera mode. But um, but I've practiced so much and I've recorded pop songs, so it's um, it, it, it takes some practice for sure. Got it. Well, we'll delve into you know your styles on these new singles, but. First, let's do a couple shout outs to people watching. So we have the stager. He's saying hi. Hello. Bruce Carter is on. Hi, Bruce. Jerry Walden. Hello. Tuomo. We have Amy. And I think that's everyone for now. Guys, if you have a question for Elisa or Ashley, please go ahead and put it in the chat and we will get to those as soon as we can. Um, but to start us off, we actually have a question from a really wonderful friend of mine. She's a sweetheart and a musician, uh, Julie Mae Hales, and she left a question for you guys. So I think it's suited and a good way to start because both of your singles have some original songwriting with them. So her question is, what inspires you to write your own music? And let's go Elisa and Ashley. Uh, that's a good question. Um, most times they say that when you're songwriting, it comes from things that have maybe happened in your life. And, and uh, so this was kind of, this is kind of my first time writing my own songs. I actually started during COVID and then I actually released one, uh, a, a holiday song. And so, so this is like, the second song that I've actually written. So it's, well, for this song, it may have been based on some feelings that I've been through and then just uh, um, listening to other songs in that similar um, genre or a similar songs that are, that, that are relatable to this one. And how about you, Ashley? Yeah, I 
totally agree with Elisa. That's really similar to what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, life experiences um, and obviously, like you said, different media, other songs you're listening to and, you know, just different feelings or even books. Um, I'm always definitely thinking, books. Yeah, yeah. Books. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Books and movies. <laughs> And sometimes watching TV, you're watching TV and mm. you're watching a movie or something. And then it's like, oh, you know, you an idea pops up in your head. <laughs> yes, exactly. This influence from everywhere. And For sure. I'm always, you know, filled with different melodies and different ideas. And, you know, when you're writing music, you don't, I, it's not always like the same process. Sometimes you might come up with a melody first. Sometimes you might come up with a lyric first. Sometimes you might just you know I don't know be inspired by a lot of different things so for sure <laughs> so we have from Bruce Carter a question Ashley what inspired charade yeah <laughs> so this song you know I I have been thinking about it a lot and this song is it's kind of hard for me to talk about honestly because it is so vulnerable and mm. and I wrote it during a time in my life when you know I was I was really kind of trying to figure out you know what what is my future going to look like and you know what have I learned from the past and all of the different things that I went through basically from the first song that I ever composed on the piano is actually in this song um the the main piano kind of counter melody that was I wrote that when I was like 12 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> wow. So this song really encapsulates my whole musical journey and, and a lot of the obstacles that I went through and overcame. And the day that I wrote this song, I was actually kind of, I was talking to my mom and, you know, as I do a lot, <laughs> my mom. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm just kind of telling her like, I, you know, all the frustrating things going on. And she's like, just go in your room and write a song. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So, you know, I go in, write the song, like all in one go, just like almost like a diary entry. I just wrote it, the whole thing. And uh, yeah, so that <laughs> that's charade. <laughs> <laughs> so it really is a, the story of my past. And, you know, mm -hmm. just writing that song, it, it allows me to kind of be free from that and just look yes. forward from the future, you know? Yes. I think yeah. that's so true, Ashley. Um, as musicians, people often see our highlights, right? So they get to see the finished song, but the journey is very difficult. So yes. first of all, thank you for your honesty in writing that piece, because it's not an easy thing to do. Um, and I'd, I'd like to ask that same question to Elisa about, you know, what inspired your piece well, uh, th the song is actually from a piano piece that my producer Songsbury wrote in on his uh, piano uh, improvisations album. And I was listening to the album and I was like, there's no lyrics. It's just piano. So I listened to the next song, like no lyrics. I'm like, okay, this is all piano. And this the, the piano piece in particular just grabbed my attention and it's actually called My Kingdom. And uh, mm -hmm. so I just immediately started writing lyrics and um, lyrics about falling in love with someone that you can't have. And I've honestly, I've, I've had these feelings, but um, before, but uh, I don't know what, why I wrote it for this particular melody or piano piece, but um, I kind of like songs like that. Uh, like mm -hmm. there's a similar song like from James Blunt uh, called Beautiful very similar. And then I think at the time I was writing it, I was watching Friends uh, on Netflix and uh, a same a similar situation happened between I think was Joey and Rachel. Mm -hmm. So and then I was as I was um, watching th those episodes, I was I, I got inspired to write even more, <laughs> you know, more lyrics came to mind. So uh, yeah, and uh, it was fun. A long process, a long process, because I think his album came it was about five years ago when it came out. Oh. 
I think that's a cool thing about songwriting is you can either go from something, well, the emotion can be true regardless, but you can take it really beyond like the situation that you're writing in it and put it into these fantasy worlds. That's why you get these cool musicals. (laughs) Yes, you start thinking about stuff in your head and it's like, oh my God, like, can I really be with this person? And then it's like, okay, well, no, I can't. So, and that's what you start writing about. So... (laughs) Can I and ask like, you? Like oh. Ashley said, it's sorry. Uh, like Ashley said, it's like a diary. Like you're you're, you're writing your thoughts and feelings on on paper, and then turning it into a song. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you guys um, who was the first person you played it to? Was it a collaborator with the piece, or you know, was it a family member when it was finished? Who did you share it to with for the first time? Yeah, my family, my mom and dad. <laughs> My brother, yeah. Uh, I shared it with uh, w- with my producer Songsbury because uh, w- when when his album came out, I told him right away I'm going to write lyrics to this song. So um, I had to. Sh- he was the first one to to hear it, but um, I had to record it on my phone and uh, w- with his with his piano melody. And it was a little bit difficult because it's not an actual song with a chorus and bridge and all that stuff. So, um, but, and I was a little shy sending it to him because I think he is just a brilliant musician and I, I think the world of him. So, um, but he liked it. Thank God. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that is awesome. Um, who were some of the other people you collaborated once you were getting, you know, into the recording phase? Um, I've, I've uh, collaborated with, um, with, uh, a tenor here in Toronto, a few tenors here in Toronto. Um, and they are on, they are featured on my albums, uh, tenor, uh, Charles Di Raimondo mm-hmm. and, um, also Christopher Dallo. And how about you, Ashley? Yeah. So I had written this song and there was an opportunity to, do a production mentorship um, to be mentored by producers and because I produce all my own music. And so, um, yeah, so I worked with uh, Nathan James Larson and Brian Gangwish um, and they they like helped to tutor me, kind of like give me some ideas and um, they mixed and mastered it for me. So, yeah. Um, I'm so impressed by the fact that you just said you produce your own uh, music. It's very Ashley. nice. <laughs> That's <is> really cool. <laughs> thank you so much. Good I, for you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did the, I have an EP, um, three songs, three pop songs on Spotify and all the places, all the music sites, um, as well as my holiday album. And yeah, I did everything on those um, all by myself. So <laughs> Good for you. Wow. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, that's really impressive. Um, Can I ask you both, is there any little bit of advice that you would share with anyone who wants to do this? Maybe they're just getting started now. Would you have either from this specific release, something that you've learned or just a little bit of wisdom in general? Go ahead, Lisa. (laughs) Okay. Um, (laughs) Words of advice. Uh, it's very hard uh, to be a musician, to be an independent artist, but mm-hmm. just keep, you know, pushing through and keep creating because honestly, I love singing original songs uh, because they're your own and you don't have to worry about, you know, when you're doing covers, you know, the royalties and all that stuff. So yes. if, you, if you're a writer and, and you love music and you love composing your own stuff, then do it. And, you know, and do it for yourself and you know it'll be you know you never know you you can make someone you can inspire someone uh you know with the song and um yeah so just keep going and don't give up yeah no one has your unique point of view right that's right yeah it'll resonate with the audience in a way that only you can yeah of course of course exactly yeah I'd like to quote one of my mentors, um, Angela Brown. She's a opera singer. She sang at the Met and I did some master classes with her and I were just, I remember her saying, she, she said, you have to have tough skin to be in this business. Mm. I'll never forget that. 
That's the truth. <laughs> That's yep. the truth. <laughs> A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> That is very true. Um, let's look at the comments here. We're going to say another quick hello to William. Hi, William. Um, and we also have David joining us. So again, anyone, hello. any questions, pop them in the chat for us. Um, OK, so I'm curious now. We've talked a little bit about you know writing the pieces and everything like that. Um, can you tell us when you tend to record? I'm curious, Do you are you somebody that just was like, one take and done? Do you do multiples in a row? Or do you like to put little pieces in? You know, what's kind of your, I guess, strategy when you're going into the studio? Um, should we start with you, Elisa? Uh, well, I, I, I wish I can produce my own music, but um, Songsbury is my producer and he produced this uh, song. And so he really makes me makes you work hard and do multiple things. <laughs> okay. So oh, just with the first section of the song, the first verse, it was it probably 30, 40 takes just on that part. So. <laughs> yep. That's a very, I was watching a documentary on David Foster and that's what he does. He just makes, he's one of the best, right? And he just makes them yes. over yeah. and over again. Yeah, they, they, they just want more to more um, ver versions of everything you do. And then uh, at first he was, uh, I was sound. I had too much vibrato, and see, that's where the classical voice was coming. And yep. <laughs> he's like, "Well, you got to sing without less vibrato." So, okay, do it again. And then I was getting it. Now I'm like, "Okay, that was a good one." And it's like, "Nope, do it again." <laughs> <laughs> but it's so, all worth it in the end. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. It, it came out really well, and and uh, yeah, I, I'm really proud. It of Sounds beautiful. Part, yeah. Know? Yeah, I mean, even when I'm recording in my my home studio, I still treat recording sessions like, you know, like it is an actual studio time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like go in really focused and like <laughs> do all the takes. Um, sometimes I like to just sing through the whole song and, you know, but sometimes you can do like, like record the chorus and then it can like loop back so you can just like sing it and then it'll go back automatically and you can do it like 30 times just in a row oh, <laughs> so that's nice. really helpful <laughs> so that's usually what i do um and yeah usually i'll comp together like sections so like a whole verse a whole chorus you know so it's more like i don't, I don't like chop it up <laughs> like <laughs> you know every single word is like from a different right right <laughs> but i mean i think it's it when you get like to that level you're because recordings are around for so long, right? So it's, there's obviously a difference between you do like a live concert recording and that has it captures a mood, it captures the feeling of the audience. But then when you get those recordings that are gonna be with you a while, it makes sense that you know, you were really putting the time to make sure we get it the way we want it to be remembered. Yeah, definitely. And, but um, sometimes usually the first take is like the best one. <laughs> you do like 30 and you're like, the first one was good. <laughs> the magic of the first one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have a question here. So it says, do both, do you have a fave? Uh, Bruce, are you talking about a favorite song that they've recorded? Um, clarify for us in the comments and we will come back to that one. Um, but for now, let's see. I do have some rapid fire questions. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> so everyone, if you have longer questions, put them in the chat, but let's do a bit of fun questions. Okay. Okay. Um, Wait, Natasha, before you do this. I yeah. I'm like, I probably, you know, like both of them. So even though if I like both, I'm not going to say I like both because I'll probably end up saying I like both on all of them. So I'll, it's I'll okay. 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 <laughs> it's okay. I am very bad at picking actual rapid fire. So <laughs> if they get longer, that's fine. Okay. Okay. It's good. Okay. So the, the first one we have is, are you a homebody or more of an adventure traveler? Oh, that's easy. Homebody for sure. <laughs> uh, um, can you be a little bit of both? <laughs> yeah, a, both. Everything is a both. little bit of both. It it all depends. <laughs> so, Elisa. Okay, so you're a bit of both. Now, do you like like camping, like low key, or do you like full hotel? Which I prefer. Um, oh, you know, <laughs> definitely the hotel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Give, me a, give me a hotel, a five star hotel. Yes. And I, I'll sit in the 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 cafe with sunglasses on and and a coffee yes. and 
yeah, camping, I only did it once in my life. And um, I, 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 I never did it. <laughs> Yep, we're all high maintenance. Like <laughs> that's it. But, but you know, it's not even that. It's just like I don't know. If I'm going to go out from my home, it's like it, it needs to be a better experience than my home, right? So you're just there. Like, you go <laughs> exactly. I don't want to get eaten up by mosquitoes and stuff. Exactly. And that's not fun. <laughs> not at all. Um, <laughs> so here's another one for you guys. Are you people that just like to sing throughout the day, like as you hear music or, or do you have really blocked periods where you're like, okay, this is my practice time and this is what I'm going to do it. Yeah, both. Oh, I know I can't do both. <laughs> ah! I like to sing in the grocery store, but I also like to close the door and just really focus in on my practice too. So yep. yeah, the, the, the same. <laughs> I, I put, when I go out, I, I put my ear pods on and I'm singing in public uh, I sing at the store uh, or I sing <laughs> w w waiting for the, 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 the bus. And, uh, um, but then there's a time where I have to sit down at the piano and, um, hopefully no interruptions with my kids or, uh, or my dog. And, um, and I sit down <laughs> and I practice, uh, especially if I have a, you know, church and, or, or, um, a concert coming up. So, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Agreed. Do you prefer, and this could be any format, like TV shows, musicals, whatever, but do you prefer comedy or drama? Oh, <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> it's very hard. I think I prefer comedy because I, uh, I t I'm a very serious person. I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> but I, I really like comedy because it just makes me makes me well actually some of my favorite shows are a combination of both like they can be like really dramatic and then like comedic ah but I can't say both. what are some of your favorite shows Ashley oh goodness well actually I really like um I love the older movies mm -hmm. um the Audrey Hepburn type movies oh um, nice <laughs> and I love um I love anime too I don't watch very much but the ones I have seen I really like um and yeah yeah it's a bit of both yeah, and you, Lisa? <laughs> yeah I, I would say a, a, a bit of both um I do like the you know the comedy I watch a lot of the comedy with my family because that's pretty much the only thing we can all watch we all agree mm -hmm. to watch together but but then there is the drama part like I watch a lot of the a lot of the the doctor shows there's a lot of drama <laughs> in there so, yes yeah so you know I I like that and uh yeah, it's fun. A little bit of both is fun. <laughs> I think there's something, especially when you then get to step into a character and do it, is to do something like when I'm singing dramatic songs, like heartbreaking, you know, I've been blessed that I haven't had that exact experience, but it feels so good. It's so cathartic to get these big emotions out. Even if you haven't experienced that same thing, it's oh, just like- Oh, for sure. Most definitely. Most definitely. The, and they're all dramatic, those operas, right? So, so it, it's someone's always to get dying that character, and uh, you know, and it's also fun explaining what the arias or songs are about. And mm. but, like, O mio babino caro, for, for example, like, you know, if the father doesn't give her his blessing about w w w with her loved one then she's gonna die but <laughs> you know yes you know but i i actually Speaking of dramatic yes, yes. <laughs> but i actually when I, I performed it at my one of my own shows and that's what i i said i said that exact same thing and everyone was laughing but then when you hear the song, everyone gets all serious. It's like, yeah. oh, wow, <laughs> Shit, that's so true. <laughs> you know? uh, I love that. Um, OK, do you guys collect anything? Not really collect. Well, uh, I, I collect a lot of clothes and shoes and, <laughs> and purses. <That's> true. <laughs> Those are my things. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, yes. Um, clothes, shoes, purses. I've loved collecting things like my entire life. Um, <laughs> when I was little, I would like make sure to save every single toy like in order. Um, <laughs> but I love um, dolls. Actually, I have a lot of dolls from like oh, my whole life. Yeah. Um, and I love uh, pushing. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows what that is. It's a cat. No. <laughs> pushing. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, so I love to get pushing stuff. Like I have an umbrella and like, <laughs> um, I don't know, house slippers and stuff with pushing. But um, yeah, that's the, and Hello Kitty. I love 
Hello Kitty stuff right here. Oh, you can see right here. I have my Hello Kitty. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's cute. Okay. Let's see. Our last uh, rapid fire question is, well, let's see. Do you prefer driving or flying? Well, I don't drive. I don't either. What do you know? Oh, you don't <laughs> know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've never gotten got my license. Um, where I live, I have everything close to me, and there's there's a public to. transit, so I yeah. use that a lot. And and now we have the Uber, so I I use that a lot. Uh, uh, but. Um, it, it, I guess it depends on the location. Uh, if I were to go on a trip, um, I've driven to to Montreal, which is a six hour drive from Toronto. And but uh, if I were to go to the US, I definitely fly. <laughs> so. Yes, I'm a passenger. Well, they call it passenger princess. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, me. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so and I actually enjoy flying too. like, I enjoy the experience of getting the, the suitcase and and the adventure, I love how adventurous it is. So, yeah. <laughs> well, perfect ladies, thank you. Uh, I'll continue to try to improve and actually make the rapid fire, but we have two questions coming in. So Bruce says, um, do you both have a favorite type of music? So not necessarily to perform, but also just to listen to. Yeah, you're not gonna believe what mine is. Classical crossover. <laughs> 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 I'm serious. That's what I listen to like That's all awesome. the time. It's classical crossover. Yep. Uh, I like I like all uh, genres. I listen to almost everything. And um, my daughter actually, she's a Swifty. So mm -hmm. she, uh, I've been in Taylor Swift is actually coming to Toronto in November. So we got tickets to see her. So I've been listening nice. to a lot of her stuff because my daughter said I had to study her her music so oh. uh, but um but lately I've been into the I guess 80s 90s music and I got into black black velvet Alana Miles as well mm -hmm. as um um oh my goodness I can't I can't remember the song now but it's Joan Joan Jett um uh I hate myself for loving you and uh, so those two songs have been on my on my mind lately and uh I want to kind of add them to my repertoire <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they are so much fun so <laughs> that's the nice think, thing oh go I ahead Natasha. I've heard crossover have you uh Ashley have versions of those I don't think so <laughs> no I was gonna say that's no nice I, I probably <laughs> wouldn't do a classical version of them I'd probably sing them as is but Great. There, Got it. there is a particular song that I recently found from watching a movie that I like to turn into uh, maybe a crossover uh, song. So it's actually like more pop, pop, so rock style, but I'd like to, uh, to turn it into that as well. I think that would be really cool. So. It's nice yeah. to have that at your disposal, right, Ashley, where you're just like, I've heard you do the pieces. I, I think it was country pieces and you don't necessarily have to tap into the high soprano. You can use, you know, more of the chest, more of the mixed voice. Oh yeah. I, that's what I love about like doing a wide variety of music, especially because I do so many concerts, like, you know, you can start off kind of doing a low, you know, lower piece and then you can move into a higher piece and just kind of, cause if you're just singing like the same range for the entire hour, that can be kind of tiring. So that's good to, it's good to switch it up. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. It, it, it's fun. And it's, it's cool that we're able to do that to, to switch, go into opera mode and then, okay, now it's, now we're doing a pop song and okay, now we're doing some musical theater, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's good to have that diversity. Okay. So David has a question. So he said for both lovely ladies, where is the one place you would love to perform? <clears throat> and there's probably many places, but <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Go ahead, Elisa. Most, oh gosh, most definitely. Um, I would love to perform in, in one of the big uh, theaters. Uh, there's a few of them here in Toronto, uh, such as the uh, Roy Thompson Hall, or I think that's what it's called now. I can't remember that they've been changing the names to these theaters. Uh, so yeah, something like that, where 
where I've seen um, operas uh, perform. And we also have a huge uh, stadium that uh, Bocelli actually performed at recently. I went to his show on Wednesday. Yes, yeah. Bolsha Bank Arena. That's a big, big stadium where our Toronto hockey uh, hockey plays at. So um, I would love to do that one day and just sing in front of thousands of, of people. That's one <laughs> <Yes>. of my dreams. <laughs> yes, I agree with, with all that. With an orchestra behind me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was um, a really cool uh, Bocelli concert. It was like Portofino. Have you guys okay. seen that one? Yes. yes. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool to sing on like on the water, like in Portofino. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, anywhere in Italy is... <laughs> Anywhere in Italy. <laughs> Anywhere in Italy is great. <laughs> yeah. And the outdoors concert seems like so much fun too. Just the yeah. audience is more relaxed. They just... Yes, I've done I've done outdoor shows before and they are so much fun. So much fun, especially we, we do that a lot here in Canada in the summer months. So June and July and August. And uh, it, it, it's so much fun. Yeah, something special about being outside in the open air, like the music can just go on forever. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot more people out there. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> Especially if they're walking by and then they stop and that's like, OK, this is good. So they like it. They seem to. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, David, Bruce and everyone else who asked a question. Um, I'm going to have one final one for you both, but um, I also want to remind everybody to please go ahead and stream and download. Yes. Didn't think it could be you and Charade. Um, do you guys have any um, any merch that goes along with these? Or I'm sure people can go to your stores and find more things. I don't have, um, I used to have a store on my website, but then I just took it down. And then uh, I was only selling them during the live shows, but uh, hence yeah. my name, Elisa Rose. Um, I have a, uh, actually that that's another thing that I collect uh, now that I'm thinking about it, are roses. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, of nice. course. <laughs> so um, I started selling them during my shows and uh, I continue to do so. So I guess... If anyone is interested, they could just reach out on on my Instagram page, and uh, hopefully, when things you know get better, I start doing more shows. I'll I'll create a store online, yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. I have a store on my website, ashleynicolesoprano.com, and things will be back in stock May first. I have hats, tote bags, um, my nice. holiday albums. Um, yeah. Which I have here. <laughs> yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, Thank my you. CDs too. I have three of them. Uh, so, you know, if any, again, if anyone's interested, they can just reach out on Instagram um, at Elisa Rose Official. Perfect. Yeah. Well, my final question for you ladies is, <laughs> I know that, you know, while we have one project out there that we're delighted to have in the world, you're always working on a lot of other things in the background. So can you share anything that's coming up? Uh, I have an, another single coming up. Um, I'm not sure when, probably in May. Uh, it's a special song that I wrote uh, in honor of my son who has mm -hmm. autism. And um, I, I, I'm really excited when, when, that, uh, when I start um, recording and, and, and when I release that. So that, that's coming up. So stay tuned. <laughs> awesome. We'll look forward to that one. Thank you. Yeah, so I have about 60 private gigs book um, between May and September, and then a, a private Christmas show in December. Um, but I, my main uh, focus is working on writing more music and producing a lot more original singles, as well as I'm working on an album as well. So of all original music, maybe Friday. it might have some cover songs um, of Great American Songbook classics that I might put some of those into as well. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to be working on a lot of a lot of uh, recording uh, original songs. There'll be a different. There'll be mostly classical crossover, but I, like I said, I do a lot of variety of styles as well. So, yeah, that's yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. <laughs> that's what I want to do too in in the future is just a whole album of original songs because I did write quite a lot during, especially during COVID. So mm. yeah. <laughs> 
Well, thank you guys both so much for being here, for chatting with me. Um, as you mentioned, so the websites are ashleynicholesoprano.com and elisaroseofficial.com. Um, I thank everyone for tuning in and look forward to doing this again when you guys have new music to share. Yay. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you.